Hello everyone and welcome back to For the Minions episode 22, the weekly show where we talk about the spiritual successors to Paragon. This week we're going to be talking about the news and updates as always. Not a lot, not a lot for the news and updates, but then we'll get into the poll results. Then we have tech time, this time without Ruba, it's just going to be with me. We're going to be talking about skin color variations. Then the topic for discussion this week will be things from other games that we would like to see brought into Paragon. I am your host, Mangoose. Joining me this week, I should say as always, but she wasn't with us last week, it's Mandy Mal. How you doing, Mandy? I'm doing much better now, thank you. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Are you yeah. over the diarrhea? You know, I'm glad I'm here to defend myself because <laughs> you're a dirty, dirty liar. <laughs> How dare you lie about a woman who was on her deathbed? I was gravely <laughs> ill, so I hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> uh, very, very proud of myself, yes. <laughs> Why don't you introduce our guest host, Mandy? Today, I am so excited to introduce our guest host because we have a very loyal uh, fan of the show. I, you're, you're a fan, right? That's safe to call oh, you. Oh, very, fan. very, very much so, yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, Oto. How are you? Oh, I'm very honored to be here with the great Lon Shita and Bashi Pio. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's honestly, it, it's great to finally be able to get on the show. It's basically probably one of the better things that's going to happen to me this year. So, Oh, well, we're I'm so gonna... excited to have you because you're always there. You're always supporting us. So it's really, really cool, especially, I think, for you to be on the show and get to kind of share in the cool experience. I hope the best thing to happen to you this year is that Paragon comes back, my friend. Yeah. That would top this. <laughs> very much <laughs> not, would top not this. Not even going to lie. All right, so uh, Odo, who was your favorite hero in uh, Paragon? Well, as it happens, it is Sparrow. Oh. You and Mandy matching up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What was it about Sparrow that you enjoyed so much? Uh, Originally, the I started off playing League of Legends, so I played Ash initially. So when I came over to Paragon, one of the first things I looked for was a hero with a bow, and it happened to be Sparrow. And it's after that, I just kind of fell in love with the way she was. Oh, right on. Yep, that's pretty much exactly. I mean, I didn't come from a League of Legends background, but I just saw cool chick with bow, and I was like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> So let's, uh, let's get into the news and updates for this week. Like I said, very quiet this week. In fact, the biggest news and updates we had, kind of a change of pace this time, was from Visionary Games and Phoenix Rising. Oh, wow. Quite the juxtaposition there. Um, they they, uh, they hired themselves a new artist, and I'll link his, uh, his portfolio. He linked it in the Discord, so I'm sure it's fine to link here. You can check out some of the work he's done. Um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, he did... Like, the low-poly hero he did, Nuke, looked really cool. I'd like to see a high-poly version of her. You guys got a, ch got a chance to check that out? Yeah, yeah. I, I did. It was really cool. There, Not only Nuke, but there was this really cool... I can't remember the name. I think it was, like, Q4 or something or other. Um, but it was, like, a robot-looking thing with a drill hand. And I was like, oh, I can totally see that <laughs> running around in Agora. Like, I was like, put that in put that in paragon now like it looked really really cool yeah i like the little uh go thing that was uncolored with the big old horns and like the big snout i don't remember what it was but it just looked amazing even though it was uncolored but it was just one of those things where like if i seen that running towards me i'm i'm gonna go dig a hole and put myself <laughs> in it <laughs> so cool stuff um like it like I always say with Visionary Phoenix Rising, you know, they have the liberty to think outside the box, outside of the Paragon Hero box, that is. And uh, they, they're, they, they're able to take full advantage of that, and I want to see them do so. So it's going to be uh, cool stuff, cool stuff for Visionary. Glad to see uh, glad to see a little news from them, too, and perking up. A lot of people thought they uh, always think they're, they, they're di they died back in November. They did not. They've just been very quiet. Yep, they're plugging along. Another thing that I thought was uh, interesting about the artist, his style seemed to mesh well with what they've already got going mm -hmm. on. So I think they made a really good choice there. I'm sure, obviously, that was part of their choice, but it just was like, I could see this already kind of like going with the characters they've already showed us. Uh, as far as other news, uh, Ethereal gave us a little teaser, a little image of uh, Grognark, so... Um, I'll link that in the, I think I'll put it in the Discord so you guys can take a look at that if you want. And um, so, not, not a lot from them either, but at least we got us a little little teaser, teaser, teaser. And then, um, 
let's just uh let's just go through talk a little bit about meta buff um we still don't have anything on meta buff as far as the closed alpha they've been very quiet since then i know they're i know they're working hard every time you talk to them they you know they say that you know they're plugging away they're trying to get to a spot where they can release a little more information but um oda what do you think of meta buff i, I think they're doing a good job i like where they're going with it i like this i like the style it's looking like it's going to turn out once they get to the point where they can release it it's going to be very competitive with any of the other games that come out. So I'm really excited for MetaBuff to get there if they can get to where they can do the uh, uh, early access. Yeah, people are uh, people are fiending for it. What do you think, Mandy? Yeah, same. I'm really, really excited to get my hands on it. So I just can't wait. I know that, you know, them being quiet is a good sign. It means they've got their, you know, nose to the grindstone and they're working hard so um i don't mind i don't mind them taking a little bit of time to to get everything perfect get everything right um and and get us uh into that that alpha as soon as they can i can't wait yep a little bit of news for meta buff uh Opalus prime who was on the show their uh, their vp he hosted the show i think it was 19 episode 19 was it i don't know i don't yeah. remember somewhere around there 17 19 i don't know but anyway he he, he hosted the show with us and uh he's uh he entered some tattoos in a tattoo tattoo competition i don't know if you guys knew this but uh a Popolopolis prime is a uh tattoo <laughs> artist so i'll link that if you guys want to go check that out and then um for omega studios again nothing out of them really they're just still working on their hero kits trying to get the alpha back online i mean we got to play it just for a little bit there um, somebody in the comments, I forgot to look up their name, but they made a pretty good comparison. They were talking about the comparison between MetaBuff and, uh, and Omeda Studios right now. It's kind of like if both of them were showing us a website and MetaBuff has shown us a really pretty website with all kinds of cool features and tools and buttons, but none of those buttons work. They haven't showed us that any of those buttons work really. Whereas Omeda Studios, their website probably isn't quite as flashy. And it doesn't work really well, but it does work. Like, if you click on the, the Omega Studios button, you know, something happens. It, it, it takes you somewhere. So, um, I thought that was a pretty cool analogy. What do you guys think? I think that's a great analogy. Uh, I mean, I don't mean that to, like, sound shady or anything towards MetaBuff. I'm sure they've got all their ducks in a row. But, uh, ooh, look at me. I'm like Windu with my, with my analogies. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, I think that's a really good way to, to put it. Yeah, and I can't really disagree with that. It's kind of the way it's looking. It's it's one of those things where it's like, do you want function or do you want it to look pretty? Which one's more important at that point? Yeah, true. Yeah. I think they both look good. I think uh, Meta Buff just hasn't... And I'm not saying that Meta Buff's not going to ever show us anything. I'm just saying that right, right, right now, Meta, sh Meta has shown us a bit more than Meta Buff. But I'm still very excited to see some, some actual gameplay out of Meta Buff. Uh, excited to see some good gameplay out of Ethereal as well. Um, yeah. I want to see, I, I really think they're going to, there, there's something big brewing over there. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it comes out this month and we get to take a look at it. But uh, that would be cool. Um, the Ethereal, I, I find very exciting. Probably probably the most exciting out of all the games because I'm a sucker for new stuff. But <laughs> Okay, let's uh, roll right into the poll results for this week. Uh, last week we had Core at 66, Predecessor at 7, Ethereal at 7, Phoenix Rising at 2, and all of the above at 19. This week... Uh, we had Core at 68, Predecessor at 6, Ethereal at 8, Phoenix Rising at 2, all of the above at 17. So not that big of a swing just like last time. It was, it's kind of it's kind of staying steady right now, and uh, that's understandable. There's not a lot of news coming out for any of these games. So, of course, you know, the excitement levels for each game aren't going to really fluctuate that much. It looks like Core went up just a little bit more, and uh, Predecessor went down a little bit, Ethereal went up a little bit, but really no big deal no 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 huge fluctuation in the poll result numbers um so that's it for the poll results let's head on into tech time unfortunately it's not tech time with ruba you have to deal with uh one of my tech times but uh we're going to be talking about something that you guys have been asking about quite a bit which is being able to change certain aspects of a skin like having your cloak be different than the rest of your skin or having your boots a different color than your pants or that sort of thing so i'm going to sh show you guys you know what how that works within the unreal engine and how how they can do that so uh let's head on into tech time on this week's tech time we'll go over the feasibility of some skin customization one of the ideas i've seen quite a few times now involves people wanting to be able to customize individual articles of clothing 
As you can see here, I've been messing around with Aurora, and doing color changes to various layers of clothing is indeed possible. Let's run through the specifics to give you guys an idea of how it can be implemented. Let's load up the Heavy Armor Lieutenant Bellica skin. As luck before me pointed out, the skin makes her look a bit like Seamus from Metroid. Let's try to change the overall color scheme of this skin first before we do any individual changes. To do that, I'm going to go into our Materials folder where all the shaders are kept for the mesh. I can click on this Layers folder and that will give me access to her overall color palette. Now in this new window, I'm able to edit several aspects of the skin's appearance. Let's change the color to something noticeable like pink. Save that so it applies in the engine, and there we go, Pink Heavy Armor Bellica. But the question was, how about being able to go one step further and customize individual articles of clothing? Doing that ended up being much easier than I thought. We have several materials to choose from here for Bellica. Each one is named for what part of her body it applies to. Let's select her upper body and see if we can make her top a little different color than her bottom. Now we have several different options for colors. I'm going to pick some stuff that contrasts quite a bit so we can see if there's any noticeable difference. And there we go. Now her top armor is different than the rest of her stuffs. So it is possible to do individual color customization for skins. I'm sure actually implementing this into the game as an option will be far more difficult than what I just did. They'll have to have multiple options for each material layer for each skin that you can cycle through. Definitely not what they need to be focusing on at this point in the development cycle, but it's something that we can maybe look forward to. The next step in this process is changing the textures and seeing if you can mix and match different parts of different like T3 skins. That however is well beyond my skill set and something I'll need to ask Rubo about. Before we go I want to show you a skin I made in honor of my friend Sockap. Sock works at a sewage treatment plant and sometimes streams from the turd factory he works at so I made a poo face bellica for him. No he doesn't actually get covered in poo but I thought this was funny. Anyway back to the show. So I hope you guys enjoyed Tech Time. Now let's get into the topic for discussion this week. The topic for discussion is features from other games you would like to see in Paragon. Just anything from any other MOBA or any uh, any other game whatsoever that you'd like to see brought into the uh, to one of these spiritual successors for Paragon. Uh, Oda, you're the guest. Why don't we start with you? What do you got for us, man? Uh, I personally, like I said, I would, I'd love to see a leaderboard for yeah. each of the different types of heroes. Because I'm very competitive. I like to see who's at the top. I like to be able to see what they're doing and see where I can improve. So that's something I would like to see. It's a leaderboard. I don't know with it being a mobile. I don't know exactly how they'd implement it. But I think that'd be a really cool feature to have. Yeah, especially if they, suggestion. yeah, especially if they had like their suggested builds along with it, like the build that they normally use. So you oh, could kind yeah. of tailor your build off of whoever the top the top is that i think yeah. the danger with doing that though is a lot of times when people are at the top of these leaderboards is because they're queuing as a team with other people and what works in a team doesn't always work when you're whenever you're solo queuing so if you're solo queuing yeah. you know take it with a grain of salt um i know when i was playing adc i would always pick a ward when i was so solo queuing because i never knew if other people were going to take a ward but if I was with a team, I would know I would know for a fact that my support was going to be taking a ward, so I I would just take more damage in the in the early game. But yeah, that's a that's a great suggestion, Oda. Um, I think Core plans to have all kinds of different leaderboards. Um, I know that they plan to have a team leaderboard and um, with some special things that you can unlock, like different icons for your team and that sort of thing. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think Core is definitely uh, hoping to make a name for themselves in the esports thing. I could be, you know, making wild accusations here, but it just kind of seems like they've 
laid out plans for um, for there to be options, at least in the future, um, once it's a you know nice viable game and it's got a good player group going. Um, you know, they've even talked about um, like you were mentioning having rewards for teams and top teams get maybe um, a certain I don't I don't remember what they said I don't want to put words in their mouths but um, definitely seems like a leaderboard wouldn't be out of the question for a game like core you ever thought about joining like a like a pro team or anything Oda actually when I tried joining pro teams as early as I think version 0.3 for Paragon oh wow it's just I was having because I was having issues with my PlayStation and uh, I was going through Rena Center for my first one. I ended up getting behind on bills, and right when I had my first chance, I kind of lost the system. Oh, that sucks. And then after I came back, I had to rebuild my skills because it was probably two months after that, and I kept trying teams here and there. I tried to form my own a couple of times, but there wasn't really any good synergy with them, so they just kind of fell apart. So it was something I definitely tried to do. Um, I almost had, and the fact that you couldn't have people from, because I played with, at that time, three or four different people from Britain, and I had one or two other people I'd play with over in the U.S. So when they had the split where you had to be either in the U.S. or from the EU, it was right. kind of like, well, there goes everything I had. Yeah, that would make it difficult. Well, you played carry. I, I got a carry spot up on my team that I'm making up ju <laughs> just now. That I just now decided. I'm gonna make. <laughs> well, I would be honored to accept the position. <laughs> Mandy, uh, what do you got? What you got for us? Well, the main thing I thought of that something I would like to see is voice chat, and that's for obvious reasons. Um, it's just it makes makes the game a lot better uh, strategically it's it's easier to communicate with your team so that was that was the only thing i could think of that i personally um would want to see i did i thought of a couple other features that i was like on the fence about and i wanted to bring them up to you guys and see what your thoughts are um and one i have two um one is like being able to hide in the the bushes or or the the fauna of the jungle and stuff like that. Like, um, I think in Mobile Legends you can do that. And um, there was, oh, it's a little, I always forget the name of this MOBA, but it's on Switch that I play that you can do that. So I didn't know what you guys thought about that. Or is that kind of similar to like shadow wells and fog walls and things like that? Is it kind of. Eh. Yeah, the ability to hide in bushes is pretty much a staple in every MOBA ever made. Um, it just wasn't in Paragon, and uh, oh, yeah, that that's what they kind of replaced it with was shadow walls and uh, shadow wells, and that was kind of the the three dimensional aspect of Paragon is why they had to go that route. Um, I don't know why they couldn't just make the shadow wells look like bushes, and then you could run into them. I think that would mm -hmm. be fun. It would be people would know what the purpose of the right. bushes were, since it's you know more of a staple across all mobas. Uh, Oda, what do you think? Uh, I think there there wasn't too much of that on Monolith. I mean, on Legacy where there was big enough bushes, but I know on Monolith there was a couple of spots where they were slightly big enough that if the other player really wasn't paying attention, you could hide in there and they'd run right past you. It wasn't like perfect or anything, but right. wasn't it would kind of sort of hide you a little bit. But yeah, cause I know League has the same thing. You can they got them all along the outside lanes. You can go stand in there, disappear for a few seconds, mm -hmm. or however long you need to. So, what was what was your other one, Mandy? Uh, the other one. This was actually um, Lewis's, my husband's suggestion. So, if you hate it, it's his fault. <laughs> if you love it, it was mine. I just want to make that clear. Um, no, he had. We were getting in a conversation about core regeneration. So, if you make damage to the core but then you know the the other team is able to hold you off a little bit longer should the core have the ability to regenerate i said i didn't like i didn't necessarily like that because it would just drag out a game infinitely um and it would just kind of suck to work hard and get some damage done and then just because you know they maybe were able to rally for a little bit they hold off the inevitable so mm -hmm. to speak so so i personally don't think i want to see that implemented but i wanted to see what you guys thought 
I think people, a lot of people would have the same have the same because it's kind of like the same thing where the inhibs would respawn. Right. Uh, if, I think it was after they got rid of orb dunking, where after a certain amount of time they would automatically respawn, and then I know a lot of people were complaining because that would extend the game another 10, 15 minutes. So. Right. I, mean, I, I personally don't like the idea of the core respawning health, but that's because my second match was Murdoch, and if I died, I wait to respawn. Three <laughs> percent. Done. Game over. Snipe mm -hmm. the core. Uh, I think it would be. It, it would. It would kind of add a tool that they could adjust um, game times with. Like it, mm -hmm. it could be a nice balance tool. Like how much health the core generates, if there is health regeneration of the core, could help them with balancing game times. Like if games are going too fast, they can increase the health regen on the core. If they're going too long, they could decrease how much the, the core generates health. So from that aspect, I kind of like it. Um, if they have respawning inhibitors, then no way, Jose. I do yeah. not like it at all. Um, I don't like respawning inhibitors, period. But if they have inhibitors that respawn, they, they most certainly should not have the core regenerate health. Right. Yeah, that's way too much. Good suggestions, though. Thanks. Good job, Louie. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the idea I had... Um, of course, I'll, I'm always pulling stuff out of uh, Heroes of the Storm. I know that's got, it's like, it's a baby MOBA for babies, but they have a lot of great, really weird, unique ideas in that game. Um, the thing, one of the things I like about Heroes of the Storm is instead of jungle camps, they have mercenary camps. And whenever you take a mercenary camp, like if, if you kill a jungle camp, that mercenary camp joins your minion wave and helps push the wave. I think that would be a cool thing to have in Paragon is camps that you can take over and once you take them, those minions go off and, and it's usually minions that do special things like you have siege minion like a siege minion camp or like um you know a really like a buff like super minion camp that you could have and um the reason that affects things so much is well the reason it works so well in here's of the storm at least is because everything is very objective based in that game so it's always it behooves you if something's happening at the top of the map as far as the objective go objective goes it behooves you to take those minions at the bottom of the map that forces the enemy team to have to leave somebody back to, to deal with that minion camp that's that's pushing into their lanes and they're down one person for the team fight at the objective. I think that could be done in Paragon as well. Whenever Ore Prime begins to spawn, you could take a couple mercenary camps, time your mercenary camps to be, to, to be taken then. So the enemy team is well away from that Ore Prime and you can go take it while they're dealing with that mercenary camp. Um, kind of a weird idea. I don't know. What do you guys think of that? Uh, Odo, go right ahead. <laughs> um, uh, I think it would be interesting, but at the same time, I don't know. Oh, this one's difficult. It, it, it sounds like it would be a really good idea, but at the same time, I don't know. It's one of those things where, because with the way this is, I'm trying to think about it from like through all the skill levels. There's going to be certain people who, no matter what, from like the, uh, the people that are just starting out to probably mid tier who will see that and go, Okay, that's over there, but everyone else is over here, so let's just ignore that for now. Try to wipe the team over here, and just completely ignore that and forget right. about it. Which it's, actually, it's one of those things where it, I don't know. It's, I, I don't think it would work in Paragon mainly because, in Paragon, the jungle camps are there to for the jungler to farm, and it works in Heroes of the Storm because they they have shared experience, so. You don't have to worry about gold gain. So no. I think it would screw up gold gain for the junglers if you did something like that. So it would have to be a special one-off sort of thing. And uh, there's probably enough going on without it. I just thought it was a cool idea and it would be fun yeah. to see it. But I think it would be a little too hard for them to implement and uh, maintain the balance of the economy gain amongst the junglers. It uh, would, it right. would suck if you just couldn't take a camp because you didn't, you know, it wasn't the right time to do it. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe it's true. like the first time you kill Ord Prime, you just see this big hulking thing walking towards one of it, one of the towers. You're like, <laughs> which is worse, this thing we have to kill or the rest of the team? I don't know. Mm. Wouldn't that be just fun? Like, <laughs> I said, just have it say it's like the first time it gets killed. That way, you don't have to worry about it every time, and then it's just going to be all our objectives are unimportant at this point. It's just whoever kills this first <laughs> is going to win. That would be crazy. So I think that's it for the topic for discussion. Uh, 
Let's move into suggestions. This has been suggested by the community a lot, which is travel mode. And I kind of wanted to tie this in because I was talking to Ethereal. I haven't heard them say anything about mounts in a while because they had said that they had planned to have mounts. And I just reconfirmed within this week, they still plan to have mounts in that game. So that's going to be their version of travel mode. And um, yeah, everybody wants to see travel mode come back. And Oda, I know you played back when travel mode was a thing. What do you think, man? Yes. I loved travel mode. But let me preface this. I did not like the second version of travel mode. I liked the one where you could control it, which they never explained it because they never had a tutorial for it. So it took me <laughs> a week and a half to figure it out. But after, after I did figure it out, it made the travel mode actually part of the gameplay that was important. If you knew someone like, uh, I don't think Chimera was just yet out when I started playing, but if like Grux or someone was coming up on you and you either heard them or you seen them, up on the little tabletop they had you could hit the travel mode and it took like a second and a half or two seconds to activate and get back under your tower so personally i like the original travel mode i did not like the one where you had to wait that one was just bad mm -hmm. hmm. and i didn't like um the thing i didn't like about travel mode was that you were slowed once you if you got hit while you were in travel mode um most other games that have a travel mode aspect it's usually like there's no root or slow involved with getting hit out of travel mode. Once you get hit, you're just back to normal speed. You're no longer moving faster. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're kind of slowed in that you're no longer in travel mode. And uh, that's what led to the leapfrogging and the major problems with travel mode was, you know, being able to just stay ahead of someone and keep rooting them. And ugh. travel mode, nah. they, 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 they fucked that up. It was such a great thing to have and so much fun. And the animations uh. were great. Especially yeah, the animation for Gideon amazing. just like flying around through the jungle and stuff. But uh, oh man, I'm sorry I missed that. Yeah, Actually, you I should be. <laughs> but I think the only one I didn't really like too much was Muriel's because she just kind of like hovered there. It's like she has these three wings. Make them do something interesting. <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, she she could have such she could have had such a beautiful animation for that, and they just went with they're up and glowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like we've said before, it doesn't make sense for like. Sparrow to walk around with an arrow drawn the entire match. Yeah. Or yeah, twin blast sure. holding his guns up the entire time. So for the mounts in Ethereal, um, are they going to work kind of like... The only game I can think of every time uh, mounts are um, talked about because I don't have other MOBA experience. Um, is it going to be like kind of in Paladins where you just ride your horse or your mount um, to like us you know get to the action faster basically is that you mm -hmm. know what okay cool so and that's basically what travel mode was it was instead of a mount though your actual hero just moved faster yeah pretty yes. much okay cool because like i said i didn't get to experience that so i didn't know exactly what it was or how it worked how it was yeah. implemented it should be an extra button that you press and there's usually a like like Oda was saying a wind up time like a a cast time if you will before you actually mount up or enter travel mode and then uh, you take off, and it's awesome. <laughs> Got I think, it. I think mounts would be even cooler. Yeah. Especially if there's yeah, a mongoose. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I'm a little bit biased on that, but the things I want in there, I know they can't get because they're all going to be uh, copyrighted and all that oh. other legal stuff. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I know a lot I of people knew, are... Uh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this, I am a big fan of episode one. I believe the only reason a lot of people, well, not the only reason, but the main reason was the CG why people didn't like it. They were trying to do what Star Wars always does and improve on something and ultimately it didn't work very well, but I love the pod racing scenes. Mm -hmm. Those are by far my favorite. I would love to see a pod racer. <laughs> that I would, would be cool. That would be I cool. Would I have to say that'd be pretty cool. That, that would be amazing for me. If I see a pod racer, I'm... I'm going somewhere, I'm stealing someone's money and I'm buying it. I'll go beat up some homeless person. I want a pod racer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, in the comments, I want more mount ideas this time. And in the comments, if you got a cool mount idea, let me know what it oh, is. Man. If you can These tie it in good. with a certain hero, like a certain Paragon hero or an Ethereal hero or a, a Phoenix Rising Master, whatever, if you could tie it in somehow, that that would be even better. That would be even better. So uh, let's move on to the community builder this week. And uh, we, I've already featured Shark, but I'm going to feature Shark again because 
I kind of owe Shark. Shark found uh, two people actually that were taking my videos and just straight reposting them, <laughs> like <laughs> not even taking my logo uh, out or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I never would have, I never would have noticed that shit. And then Shark was like, "Hey man, did you give this guy permission to just straight use your video?" <laughs> so shout out to Shark. And uh, yeah, he's still been Dang. putting out his uh, his Paragon cinematic air edits. So check those out. Shark's a Shark's a fun guy. And um, yeah, so shout out to Shark. <laughs> Good on you, Shark. Yeah, let, let's move on to plugs. Oda, you got anything you want to plug? I know you have a YouTube channel. Ah, uh, yes, I do have a YouTube. Um, I do stream on Twitch occasionally. Uh, I'm trying to get. Uh, my computer set up so I can start going on D Live as well. I already have an account, but there's nothing up. And a Twitter, all of them under the same name. So if you, if you can see it on here somewhere ish, maybe <laughs> it's the same for everything. Okay. Right on, Mandy. You got anything? Uh, you've been streaming a lot lately. You've been streaming your butt I off. Have. I've been streaming. It's so much fun. Um, and I appreciate everybody who's been coming out and saying hello. But yeah, I've been streaming. Um, I'm probably going to not stream as much on YouTube. I'm going to stream more on Twitch just because I seem to be having issues on YouTube. I'm not sure if that's in my settings or what. But um, if uh, Mongoose would be so kind as to link my Twitch uh, in the description and... <laughs> <laughs> like it, <laughs> and then that was a good idea for Odo to plug his Twitter. Um, I have an Instagram. If anybody wants to follow that, you can see mediocre pictures of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got my new show that seems that was a lot more popular than I thought it would be. Uh, the Goose Den is where I keep I bring on like uh, three or four subs to just come in and shoot the shit and talk about whatever they want to talk about. So. Uh, be on the lookout for that. I'm trying to do a new episode pretty soon. I'm trying to make it EU-friendly times, but uh, oh, I've been swamped with work, and I just got hit hard with a bunch more work, so yeah, that, it might be a little bit before I get the next episode out, but hopefully I will. And uh, if you guys want to want to be a part of that, you know, just join my Discord and hit me up, and uh, I'll see if I can get you in. I've got a, I've already got a long list of people that are waiting to, to be part of the show, so... I think that is going to be it for this week's For the Minions. Sorry we didn't have that much news and updates this time, but we had a lot of fun anyway and had some interesting conversation, and hopefully that's what you guys are coming here for. And if you stayed this long, I appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. This is about to be the end of the premiere, so uh, goodbye, everyone. I should be saying goodbye in the chat right now. Do that, future mongoose. Say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so for the For the Minions crew and our special guest, Oda... Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Mangoo.